Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. And what is this gasp that you're looking at? Is this a sine wave deformer? No, no it's not. It is even better, it is a sine wave fall off that you can use with any deformer. Does it come in moto, you ask? No, no it doesn't. But I'll show you how to make it. And I'll show you how to save it and reuse it. So let's get started. I'm gonna control in a new scene here. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do in my brand new scene here is rename this empty mesh item to plane. Now it is a, we'll call it a plane for uh, obvious reasons. Let's add a cube operator and turn the uh, size Y down to zero. Now we have a plane, yeah, see how I did that. And uh, segments, let's go big. Let's say 50 and 50, so there's plenty of uh, points to deform, looking good. And then I'm gonna go through, um, I'm gonna add a number of nodes to the scene here and I'll explain how all this works, I promise, but I'm gonna quickly add some nodes. So I'm gonna add another operator and I'm gonna add a, a push influence. Okay, this is the push deformer. There's also a push mesh operation, which is a modeling operation for push. It, it, honestly, we're just gonna go with a deformer. They kind of do the same thing or similar things with a deformer um, is the one we're gonna use for this. This push displacement X is just a kit for, uh, called Tracer X from uh, Mario Baldi. You should buy that. Um, okay, so we get the push influence in here. You'll see a distance, and I'm just in item mode. Make sure you're in item mode. Press C for channel hall, and you can see you could just kind of push it up. So it's just pushing all these polys along their normal, and of course it's a plane. All their normals are facing straight up, so it just pushes it up. So interesting. So I'm going to set that back to zero, and then I'm going to open up the schematic here and start adding a number of other nodes. So the first thing, let's select the plane, hit add selected, so the plane is down here, and see the little yellow diamond as you know click on that and uh, i really wish that uh, moto would expand these in the same sort of up down i know so like as you know mesh operation uh, list is for order while schematic is connections and you can also do connections in this one um, but sometimes it's easier to view order as up down like cube then push influence cube then push influence even though this order over here does up down doesn't matter it just looks more like that, so I kind of wish it did that. Anyway, I digress. So you'll notice there is a fall off slot in push influence, and, and we're going to construct a sign fall off using the fall off operator. So I'm going to add and do fall off operator right down here at the bottom. Select that. I'm going to plug that into our slot here. In fact, I'm just going to wait on that. I'll plug that in in one second when the magic is about to happen. And I'm gonna add a couple more items here. I'm going to add a measure distance. Now we'll um, talk about this in a second. So there's our measure distance. I'm going to add a matrix uh, construct, which is right here. Got a matrix construct, talk about that in a second. I'm going to add a channel waveform node, and that's gonna give us our sign waveform data that we're gonna use for this falloff operator. And then on um, the fall off operator itself. So first of all, you'll see it here in the item list and you'll see it, it's it got a, a center and a pivot there. In fact, if I press the move tool and wiggle it around to go over to channels, you'll see it's got position channels. Um, so you can move it, it can uh, operate in space. It does have a pivot point. So that is going to be useful to us because if you look over here in channels, you also see a world position. And down here near the bottom of channels, you'll see some really interesting stuff like uh, position XYZ, normal XYZ, point index, point part, um, things like polygon part, polygon area, polygon flatness. These are all attributes of a mesh that this fall, fall off operator can run some operations on and um, give us some information to feed into the fall off, uh, fall off um, of the influence. So I know that sounds a little complicated, but I promise I'll explain it. So. We have a fall off operator. It has a position, it's at zero, zero, zero. We know it can get, gather information on every single one of these points, right? So 50 by 50 points, we've got 2,500 points. And the information we want it to gather on those points is the position. So I can do two things. I can just grab these three here and drag it in like that. Now I have the position. That is not the position of the fall off operator. That is the position attribute of all these points that it's going to be uh, looping through. And then I can also um, right click on this guy and I can add a channel this way. So this is just two ways of doing it. You can drag from here or I can right click over here and say add channel. I'm gonna add world position. So you've got it right here or I could just do what I did and right click and add it. So these two are going to be really interesting to me. So the world position, we're talking about the fall off operator itself. That little guy here at zero, zero, zero. 
And the position is the position of all these points. And so I'm going to select both of them, just shift click, select both of them, right click and say um, separate channel. And what this will do is just, it's just going to rip those off of this node and make a new node out of it and let me move this to the left a little bit. And that just helps me visualize this. So if I, if I select it, you can see they're both like selected here. It's the same node, so to speak, but it's in two different places. So we're, we're showing the channels in two different places. Okay, so we want to see the difference between the world position, the center, this center here, the difference in position, the distance basically, between that and each of the points. And we do that by plugging the world position into this measure distance, measure position from um, input. And you'll notice this input has nine little dots. That means it's a matrix input. The data type is matrix. There's different data types like integer, float, array, matrix. An array is a list of items, right? And so you'll see position right now is a list. It just has three little dots, X, Y, Z, that's the list. An array or a matrix, if you know, is, is a list of lists. And so what we really want is a list of all, each of these XYZ lists, right? So 2,500 of these little XYZ lists is, equals a matrix. It's a, it's a list of a lists. Okay. But we need to transform this array into a matrix. Now, I think in Modo 13.1 beta, it may be doing that for you automatically now. And I think that's a feature that's coming out. But at least in 13.0 and below, you have to use a matrix construct node to plug that array into the matrix, the little dot, 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 to dot, dot, dot. We'll transform that into nine dots, which can go into our nine dots here. And now this little measure distance node can figure out the difference between this fall off operator here in each of these vertices, this vertice and this vertice and this vertice. And it can feed those into the input of a channel waveform. Now a channel waveform, if you look at properties, it has use time as input by default. That's probably uh, just there because typically you'd use time as the input to get like a waveform motion or something like that. We're gonna uncheck that, very important. Uncheck use time as input because we wanna use the distance as the input, right? There's the, uh, the distant differences between the points in the center as the inputs. Um, now what's that, what that is going to do, and I will, I'm just going to actually sketch something out using, uh, I'm just going to press in for a new empty mesh item. I'm actually going to sketch something out using the sketch tool. I don't usually do this, but let's try it. So here's like a graph, okay? And along this axis, let's call this the, the distances between the points, each of these individual points and um, the center, uh, you know, where this fall off operator is, the world position. So. Now, some of these points really close to it, they're going to be really, uh, you know, really close and not very far away. While some of the points near the edge will be way over here. And this axis right here is the sign value. So the sign value mapped to the close points is here. And then if you map the sign value along, the sign value looks like this, right? You know, towards the middle, it kind of goes up and towards the end, it kind of goes down again. So those are the values of each of these points that we're plugging into the weight here. So now we've added a fall off weight to each of those points there. And then we're gonna uh, connect the fall off operator that has a different sort of fall off weight for each of these points into the push influence. And I go to my perspective view here and hide my little uh, sketchy graph and then select the push influence, select distance, and then making sure I'm in item mode, I'm gonna press C for channel hall, and I'm gonna push out this distance. And now you see, whoa, what's happening here is we have our sine effect, right? All those distances are being pushed out, um, but they're being modulated by this fall off. And so hardly at all on the edges or in the center, kind of like our little graph, but you know, towards the middle, they're pushed out the most. Now what's cool is you can actually go down to your channel waveform and start messing with it, right? I can up the frequency so I get more of those little up down sine wave uh, loops in there. So I can just, again, press C for channel hall and drag. Now you can see I'm increasing the frequency there. So we've got quite a few of those up down loops going on in there, right? I can also lower the amplitude and that'll sort of modulate the effect. So you can lower the amplitude or you can lower the push influence, however you want to do it. And then of course I can offset it by just dragging that motion. So you can imagine animating that offset to get that motion. I can also do different types of um, channels like square or uh, triangle or uh, sawtooth, you know, whatever, all kinds of cool stuff, right? Uh, sign's the best though, so we'll go with sign. Um, so that's essentially what we're doing. We've created essentially a sign deformer by plugging 
um, these, you know, finding out these values with this little rig right here and plugging that into, with the help of our channel waveform operator, plugging that into the falloff operator and getting a separate sort of fall off for every single point on here and it gives us this cool sign effect. And so this can be used for all kinds of things, right? So I can, you know, this looks good, I like that. In fact, I'm going to go to my plane here. I'm gonna add a uh, set polygon type um, mesh operation on top of it and call that a Catmull Clark just to smooth it out. Let me just kind of go like this, looks good, I like. Looks awesome. I can also do things like over here in the channel waveform, I can drag my offset down here so I could see it like that. And then I can add something like a time node. Just type time, now I got a time node. And plug my frame into the offset and just uh, drag through my frames here, right? Or hit play. Kind of fast, so if you want, you can just select that and then do add, um, like get a multiply node and say 0.25 or so. The multiply node to slow it down. Now we've got a pretty sweet looking animated sign deformer there, maybe 0.1. Looks good. Um, whoops, let me hit stop. And so, yeah, in fact, don't use frame, use time. We'll do that. There we go, 0.1 looks a little bit better. And so, yeah, there we go. There's that animated. And what's cool is this, you know, fall off, it, it doesn't just work with push, it works with any mesh operation or deformer. So I could turn off push here and turn off set polygon type, and I can add something like a uh, spiky. So I add spike, let me turn back on um, the wireframe. So now I've spiked all these guys, right? There's my spike. And I can do something like select my spike strength and push it out. Looks pretty good. Uh, whoops, turn off uh, set polygon type, don't want it to be all, all uh, Catmull Clarky, but there's my spiky, right? And so this also will accept a fall off. So if I you know, add this down here, I can uh, plug a fall off into my tool pipe. It's the same as the fall off slot here. So I can plug this mesh operation, this fall off operator into the tool pipe fall off. And now I've got you know different spikies. Of course, this is going down to the negative as well because the sign operator goes from positive one to zero to negative one. And so you can just um, change that pretty easily by well, we can do a offset of, go over to the output and say uh, add, and then we'll just add a one to it to push everything above zero, and there we go. So these are all just, you know, um, go to reflection maybe. These are all just spikies. They're all just spikes, but their uh, distance is modulated by that fall off, which is pretty sweet. Okay, so you can use the bevels, spikes, push, whatever, any sort of uh, deformer or, uh, mesh operation can now have here is animated spikes with a waveform uh, sine wave fall off via fall off operator so pretty sweet um but you don't want to have to set this up every single time right so i'm actually gonna let me just undo the spikes and turn back on push and uh, there we go much nicer looking turn on my camel clarks there yay looks nice again so one of the things you want to do is you want to be able to save this uh, rig as an assembly, save it to disks, and so you can load it up every time without having to set this all up to get a uh, fall off operator. So what I want to do is I'm just going to unplug a few things here that I'm not going to use for my um, assembly. So I don't want that, and I uh, don't want this little plus here, and I basically just want these guys right here, right? The fall off operator and all this stuff plugging into it. I'm going to make this into an assembly. So I'm going to right click, I'm gonna say create assembly. I'm gonna call it sine wave fall off. Awesome. And here you'll see it disappears, but never fear, it's not completely gone. Here you see all these little guys here. This will let us get to our assembly. So here's our sine wave fall off assembly. And we can have inputs and outputs on this assembly. So that's nice because really what I wanna do is I have my channel waveform here. I want to get to my amplitude. I'm just gonna set these back to uh, the, the defaults here. I want to get to these, and so I'm going to add these, uh, just drag them in here to my assembly, and then I'm going to drag them to this assembly inputs, and you'll see them popping up here. And what this will let me do is rig these um, externally. These channels will be available uh, from the assembly, and I could rig time back in, or rig something into the offset or frequency, or just change the numbers or whatever I want to do. So I definitely want all of those so I can get to them. And on the output, I want to have the falloff operator. Come here, buddy. Um, I want this 
graph output. That's called a graph output. We've got two different types of links here. We've got channel links and, and these are called graph links. And so the graph links, these purple ones, contain more information than channel links. They can all, contain all kinds of information. And that's what uh, fall offs, that's how fall offs are hooked up to tool pipes and fall off slots and deformers, mesh operations. So I want to make this available uh, to, you know, plug it out on the outside of my assembly to plug into stuff. So I'm just going to go like that. And when I go back here, I can actually take this guy and drag it into my workspace. And so here it is right here. And you'll see, let me just unplug it. So there's my graph uh, link that I had just plugged out in the outputs. And here's my inputs right here. So I select this and look at my assembly channels. I have access to these inputs. I can plug stuff into them, rig them, or just put in some numbers. So, But everything's contained in this nice little neat little package here, this assembly. So I could plug this back in like this. And I can, you know, go over here to my assembly channels and again, just, you know, change the frequency or the amplitude, um, whatever, right? Pretty cool. So I'm going to set these back to one and then I'm going to right click on this. Now I can like create a thumbnail of a nice like sine wave thumbnail for this, which is what you should do. I'm just going to keep it the gear for now just to keep things moving along here. And then I am going to say save assembly preset. And so it gives a little warning here and you say, okay. And then it loads up, it goes right to your content director where your assembly is. It actually saved this earlier called sign fall off. So I'm just gonna save over that. There we go. And then I'm just gonna delete this guy from the scene, all gone. What's cool is you can always bring it back. So I can go over here to my, uh, just content browser if I wanna do it like this, or I can do, I believe if I do an add item, I can get to it too. So over here you'll see assemblies. Um, just look for the gear, sign fall off. So I can right click and say load and load that into the scene. Or I believe I can also just uh, add it from the schematic here as well, which I believe can look into the assemblies folder. And I should just be able to find my sign fall off here. So I can double click and there it is whenever I want it, whenever I want to hook it up to a push influence or whatever else, it is there eternally until I format my hard drive. So there you go, man fall off operator all the way to sign fall off to sign deformer pretty awesome so the fall off operators obviously there's going to be a huge number of uses for these um i gotta thank matt cox matt cox had put this uh, matt cox as in the moto architect matt cox had uh, put this little video up on the beta group and we were bugging him about making a sign uh, deformer sign wave deformer he had made one as a test a number of years ago, I believe. And he's like, I don't have to make one anymore. You can make your own with this cool little fall off operator. And he just showed how to do it. And I am translating that knowledge to here. So I got to give that credit to Matt. Uh, thank you, Matt. You are smarter than me. Yum, yum.